do you remember the the day that I came into the gym? Like, where, but like you had found out who I was fighting, and I, and you're like, hey, come by the gym. I want to show you something. I don't know if you remember this. And I come into the gym, and you're pacing the gym by yourself, <laughs> and you kind of got this like shit grin on, and you're like not even really making eye contact with me. You're kind of throwing a couple punches on some bags as you're walking by and stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going? He's like, you're like, oh. He's like, I don't know. He's like, I think we might get arrested for this one. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Back at it. Another Talking Trash podcast episode. Diamond Hands. What's Number going on? Number four, like Bobby Orr. Number four. Here we are, man. December 3rd. It's a holiday season. It's holiday season. Christmas My is coming favorite. up. My favorite. My yeah. favorite. Going to definitely gain a couple more pounds. Nana's cookies, you know. It's good times. Another cheese pizza just for me. <laughs> Home alone. Home alone. Well, yeah, I see what you're doing there. Yeah. Listen, first and foremost, big shout out to our people over at Bench Clearers. Diamond Hands, Daniel Ainsbury rocking a new Trasher jersey hoodie. Super sick. It's comfortable it. too, right? Oh, it's, yeah, it's unreal. Listen, Love there's it. still time to grab them before Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever you guys celebrate. There's, there's like a two-week, uh, you know, it's printed on demand. So there's two to three-week, um, you know, turnaround time. But big shout out to Bench Clearers. Always been good to us and... um I feel like we're eventually going to have to do some custom diamond hand jerseys. or the, You know, they do those tank do, tops, too. They do yeah, those tank tops some, in the summer that are sick. I think we should do some talking trash jerseys. Yeah. Would be sick. But they started with those tank tops, which are pretty sick. Yeah. And um, they just got into the hoodie game and stuff. So big yeah. shout out to our guys over at uh, Bench Clearers. And, you know, we're sitting here December 3rd, 2023. And today is – and when I saw the schedule, I knew we were going to be filming – I said, why do I remember December 3rd? It's a Which, special day. It's 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 an infamous day with the infamous Danbury <clears throat> Trashers. 18 years ago, Brad Wingfield gets his revenge on Josh Elzinger at the Danbury Arena. 18 years ago is is it's half a lifetime ago for me, which is making me feel super old. But if you caught the documentary, you kind of saw the whole storyline. But uh, basically, the Cliff Note version is um, our first season in 2004. We're playing Kalamazoo Wings, and um, Josh Elzinger, a young defenseman at the time, just a dirty, dirty uh, slew foot, stepped on Brad's leg and broke it. It was just um, it could have made our season go really south really quick. And we've always talked about the enforcers being the backbone of the team most of the time, especially in the locker room. And losing him was truly devastating. Could have been a lot worse, but. Honestly, no one thought he was ever going to play again. Um, honestly, I didn't think he was going to play again. I remember being at Danbury Hospital and seeing the x-rays, and it's just like, I remember hearing it snap like a pretzel rod. It was it was insane, and um, he wasn't going to be denied. I remember he was out the rest of the season. Off season, you know, everyone usually goes home. Everyone, you know, most of our team were Canadian. They went home, and he stayed. He lived at my house for like two months. Wow. Um so he became like a brother I never had. I'd love to have Winger in one day to talk about all the times I used to kick his ass in NHL <laughs> 04, 05, whatever the year was. I feel like I remember 05. Yeah. It's a big year. And he um, he he would always play with the Vancouver Canucks, and I would always beat him with my Devils. And uh, he'll always say different, but he knows what happened. And in all seriousness, I just remember him going through that rehab, and it was grueling. And like I've always said, he's one of the toughest guys I ever knew, period. And yeah. to see him in pain, like, you see this little petite woman, like, you know, physical therapist working on him, and him just sometimes in tears, just the pain. I was, It was brutal to watch, you know, and um, never thought he'd play again, but he said, I will play again. I'm going to get back at Josh Elzinger. And um, he did. He did. And um, on which, this day, on this day, 18 years ago, December 3rd. And it was um, it was a bloodbath, man. It was it was a scary, it, you know, it was the first time I walked into a hockey arena and you knew it had nothing to do with hockey, just period. You know what I mean? And it was like, you know, even my dad, you know, we talked before. We're like, I wonder what the hell is going to happen here. You know what I mean? And, and Winger just wasn't. I mean, he got himself like there was probably a under five percent chance he'd ever play again. He got himself going, and he comes back to to play. You know, Danbury Arena, and 
it was scary, man. It was it was it was a weird situation that whole day. No, what did it feel like? Like you know, I I feel like I've been in maybe not that exact scenario, but similar scenarios where there was like, you know, expected revenge from my team or from you know a team. What did it feel like in the room? Like, did you go into the dressing room and feel the energy? Or you know, you know, you know from playing. You walk into a, you know a good locker room. Things are loose. Guys are joking. Guys have a switch. They know when it's time for all business and stuff. But you know, things are usually loose. There's usually music. Guys joking, breaking balls. I just remember walking in and it was silence. There was no music, nothing. And um, Winger, I remember it now where he used to sit. He was like, you know, when do you typically, you know, more times than not, guys are dressed ready for warm-ups or whatever. You'd say like a half hour. I mean, usually, when are warm-ups typically before a game? Like an hour before, half hour before? Yeah, something like that, like a half hour, I think. And then So if we're saying this was a 7 o'clock game, he was suited up, helmet on at 5 o'clock. Wow. And he was sitting in his stall. And he was just, I'll never forget, just rocking, rocking. And it was, it was actually kind of, it was eerie. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, then you start thinking like, you know, you know, Winger, Winger's a madman. And I'm thinking to myself, how is he going to go about this? So I remember my dad saying, did you talk to him? And I'm like, well, I'll talk to him. I mean, what is there to say? You know, no one was going near him. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, we didn't talk to him. No one really talked to him. What are you going to say? I mean, he had business to handle. And I just remember our coach, Paul Gillis at the time, you know, put him in the starting lineup. Kind of like, if you're going to get it over with, just get yeah. it over with. And he waited. He, yeah. he was like... It went, and it, I think it drove. Did the other team start the same? That yes, against them yes. Right, so okay. you know the psychology. So he was, let him sleep. He let him sweat a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. you know the psyche of it. It was kind of like I think both teams they saw the starting line. Be like, let's just get this out of the way. Yeah. You know what I mean? And which would have been best case scenario for everybody. Yeah. Not, well, maybe not for everybody, but definitely for the guy that's yes. on the other end of this. So revenge. Josh Elzinga, this this young kid, is is just probably shitting his pants and and. You know, Winger sitting in the, and I got this footage on my my camera of the starting lineups, and he he's as serious as a heart attack, bro. And I just remember a couple shifts, he just let it go, let it go, and um, I think it was still the first period. Sure as shit, you know, it, it, there's a face off in the um, far zone where the where the video board is. It's um, you know, we're in Kalamazoo's end, and 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 Elzing is in there. You know, they got last change, right? So. You know, they sent out their tough guys, too. You know, the few that they had. You know, they had Tyler Willis was a tough guy as well. And, you know, they I guess they were going to analyze how far it was going to go. But uh, sure enough, the face-off and, and winger just like a shark, man. F- sees Josh Elzing in front of the net, cross-check right to the neck. And then our feed cuts out. So anyone huh. that was watching That's this— good. It was a technical a glitch. Technical but, difficulties? You know, as you, Perfectly you, timed technical you, difficulties, Listen, maybe? Allegedly. All, allegedly. <laughs> so UHL, you know, and I'm sure your league is the same. You know, you're supposed to supply um, the league with game tape after because yeah. they review things. And Lord knows you've been on the losing end of post-game reviews where they decide right. to penalize you after the fact, which makes no sense. Um you know, we had a, f- you know, hey, look, it was the grace of God. You know, our feed just happened to cut out right when. Sometimes was- the universe just takes care <laughs> of you. It worked AJ. out. So, you know what? Winger didn't get as bad of a suspension because really they couldn't technically prove anything. And there's no evidence. And there's no smartphones. So it was uh, it was very lucky. But, you know, the, it was a, it was some melee, man. He, um, you know, of course, everyone jumped on him. So, you know, you talk about trying to give someone a fair one. They didn't really give Winger a chance. As soon as he jumped on this kid, they all were jumping on him. But he got loose. You know, he cut, you know, you know the tricks. He cut the uh, tie down off. He had the shirt over his head, and he was man dropping bombs, hammers on this kid, um, pulling his, he had had long hair, pulling his hair, uh, kneeing him, just trying to get everything that he could get. And I just think he... It sounds sick. People don't understand, but he needed that. I don't yeah. think he would have ever rested like uh, if he didn't get his chance. You know what I mean? I wonder what his um, feelings would be towards that guy today. I'm curious. Knowing him, he probably wants another round. Knowing him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Listen, maybe we could bridge the gap here. You know, yeah. it's 2023. Do we get Brad Wingfield and Josh Elzinger together? <laughs> That'd be a heavy episode. That's a Jerry Springer-esque episode. <laughs> but uh, do I don't know. I don't know. You never know. That would be uh, that would be some pay-per-view debate there. You never know. That's, you know, there you go again. That's another great idea. Knowing Winger, he's going to want no part of that. But, 
you never know, man. But um, yeah, it was just, I just remember he got kicked out, obviously, got yeah. out of game misconduct. I remember going to the locker room to see him, and uh, he was just still wired. You know what I mean? Like, he was rattled. He wasn't he was, done. No, no, he was, he was just, I don't think anything was going to satisfy his thirst for revenge there. But he got, a, he got, a, um, you know, and, and, you know, and you know, it was still early season and it brought the guys even closer because yeah. you know how those line brawls go how it's supposed to be sometimes and, and you need a, a big line brawl to get the yeah, boys rallying and and it just i think it brought everyone and again if you're not in the hockey world you don't really get it people don't get it like what that does it brings the guys and we rolled after that it was kind of like we needed that domino to fall that year winger's got to get his due and then we just started rolling and um, we had a great rest of the year and Unfortunately, lost in the finals to Kalamazoo, which was a bitter pill to swallow. But honestly, looking back, man, you want to win championships, but Winger's like a brother. And I'm glad if, if we had to have one or the other for his sake, I'm glad we at least got him his. Uh, well, he got himself. He earned it, but he got his revenge. Good. So, yeah. I mean, it was just. Uh, so, yeah, this day when I saw the date today, I was like, oh, my God, this is this is insane. It's, it's a just big day for the trashers. Big day. It, probably the most. Significant day. I it? would say top three. Man, I mean, easily top three. I mean, that's a whole nother debate, but that's easily top. There's no way it's past three. And uh, so at that time, who else did you have? Like, did you, you had Winger. You must have had a couple. We had, guys. you know, we had John Morasti. Obviously, yeah. we had Danny Stewart, who wasn't a heavyweight by any means, but could throw with the bay. He was like a nice little middleweight. Yeah. We had Carlisle Lewis. Carlisle Lewis, heavy. Tough, yeah. uh, pff, we had, we had um, on the ice that time. I'm trying to think who was on there. We had another bigger defenseman. He wasn't known for his fighting, but he could handle his own. Donnie Grover's name was so he was, you know, look, we had um we had a we had a good formidable team. And I've said in the past the two separate trasher seasons, they're similar and different so many ways. And um, you know, I always get to debate who would win between the two teams. And I don't know. And I just remember like after the first season, I just remember how many rules the UHL put in place to like the Danbury rules. The Danbury rules were still, still going on today. Still going on. They could you be started a legacy. Yeah, for now and you're carrying it. It could be the Danbury Amesbury rules at this point. Yeah. But they, leagues, I don't think any league, I don't think hockey in general, no matter what the different leagues, has ever changed more rules. For a city than Danbury. I don't think any city's made more rule changes in a sport. That's what I'm trying to yeah, say. 100%. No I city agree. in the history that. of hockey has yeah. gotten more hockey rule changes than Danbury. We're not Danbury. even allowed air horns anymore. No air horns. Yeah. It's too loud. It's hurts. crazy. It well, hurts. we'll figure it around it. I mean, I still... I oh, still, there's... Trust me. The boy, the fans yeah. have already figured the way around it. Trust but, me. But uh, it's just so funny because uh, it's just... I don't know. I think differently. I think how do you... You know, it's... And, but it's funny because after that first season, I mean, you know... Our first season was obviously that lockout year at NHL 2004, 2005. What a disaster. I mean, anytime a league has a full lockout, it's 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 a failure. And here we are in Danbury, Connecticut, just raising hell. We were everywhere at the time, quite frankly. I remember t the Toronto, is it the Toronto Star, the Toronto Sun? One of the Toronto papers. Star, big, maybe? big, it's a big paper. It's like it's like the New York Post over. It's like a big paper, New York Times, whatever. And um I remember they had a front page. Trashers, a disgrace to hockey. I mean, it was big, man, to the point where the NHL tried to sue us. Oh, yes. I, I'm, I'm excited for this one. Let's I just, and, and, and look, I'm not going to go too in depth because I'd love to figure a way to get my father in here to tell us more because he was here. Phil Jubileo, who was our play by play, also communication guys. All I remember <laughs> was. Me and my dad having our weekly um, quarter pounder and cheese and french fries from McDonald's. He loves quarter pounder with cheese with french fries. And we're eating it. And I remember Phil Jubileo coming over with the facts. Do we even fax anymore? I don't even know. Think I, I facts. think they're still yeah. alive and kicking. But I just I remember there was a fax. Coming. I just remember there was a fax. And it had the NHL crest. And, uh, you know, the That's how you know you made it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and a bullshit Gary Bettman signature on the bottom, which obviously was a stamp or something. Mm -hmm. And, uh. In, in in smart people words, they were basically saying how it was almost like a cease and desist letter where they were saying, listen, you guys got to change your name because it's too close to the Atlanta Thrashers at the time. And I just remember being like, their logo's a bird and ours is a damn trash can. You know what I mean? But we just caused so much shit to the point where the NHL, and it's crazy to me, the NHL, you would think had so much other things to worry about at the time than a little UHL team's name. 
but they they wanted us to change our name and they were going to take legal action and look you know as an 8 17 18 year old kid you know I'm full of piss and vinegar right I'm like nah fuck that. we're not we're not changing our name and and my dad who also is not going to back down from anything or anybody <laughs> but he's obviously a little more seasoned and then he's calm and he's like well AJ you know, here's the problem. The NHL prints money. You know, they take this to court. Yeah. They could drag this out and you're forced to change the name. So I want to save the whole in-depth story for another time. But long yeah. story short, we sent the fax back and we got confirmation they received it. Somebody, there's at least one person in the NHL office that saw this. I hope it was Batman. I Who the hell knows? <laughs> but I wish it was. And we basically, and we're going to get this another time, we challenged the NHL. We were going to fly the Atlanta Thrashers into Danbury, their whole team. We challenged them to an exhibition game. Winner keeps the name. So if we win, <laughs> we keep the Trasher name. That's we unreal. lose, we'll change the name. Oh, my god! But from a, from a marketing standpoint, they were caught in between a rock and a hard place. They could not. There's nothing they can do to not look bad. They don't if want they, if the they, smoke. So we'll get into like kind of like the aftermath of it, like how we went about coming up with the decision. I really don't That's want, I, I feel like, I feel like I deserve to like tell the story with my dad and Phil yes. because it was just, it was kind of the three of us, you know, like who, and me and my dad just coming up with this idea and it was just like, looking back now, it's like, Jesus, could you imagine if they, they took I have a, an idea of how that would have gone. Probably would have been a pretty, you know, they probably would have won on the scoreboard. They would have won. But I think you guys would have won at center ice. Listen, we would have, <laughs> listen, let me tell you something. If we're going to lose our name, we're literally going to go down swinging. Oh, yeah. I There's know no that. way you're just going to take the name. Yeah. It's not going to happen. You're going to earn it. So, yeah, the NHL guys, they had Ilya Kovalchuk. They're going <laughs> to beat us. But you know what? You're going to, it's going to be a bad day at the office, man. And, and they had some tough guys too, but. We would have loaded no, up. No, not like that. Yeah. We would we would have loaded up, but uh, it's 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 one that of those. That was it. That was the one. I would have to say probably one of the toughest areas in hockey. And people <sighs> always say, "Well, how could you say that?" You know, like because um, there's probably more fighting in like the '70s and the '80s and stuff like that. But the thing is, in the early 2000s, the fighting had developed. I feel like to a point where guys were starting to really get strategic. Yes, guys were really starting to figure it out, and they were all stronger and bigger. And taking it more serious. And, like, I think, I always say this, and, and people can say whatever they want about it, the early 2000s had to be the toughest era of hockey. I couldn't agree with you more. Obviously, I wasn't around in the 70s and 80s, but, you know, the early 80s. But, you know, like you said, those guys, they're just tough as nails. They're just throwing punches. Yeah. They're just getting nuts. You know, and that taking nothing away from them. They were yeah, oh yeah. tough as hell. Yeah. But you're right. Those early 2000s, even the late 90s, early 2000s, you're right, man. You had guys that were literally training boxing in the offseason. Like, yeah. they knew how to throw. And you know from training boxing at this point, there's a big difference between just throwing a punch and landing a punch. And, yeah. and, and like, oh, and you're right. These guys were just, um, like you said, bigger, stronger, like every other sport. The guys just getting big. Just and, learning how to grapple and being technical. And, like, you know, back, like I said, the 80s and the Though so back in the day, guys were just grab and go, and they yeah. were they were all nails. They're all tough. Oh Pretty yeah. Much, if you played in the league back then, you had to be tough. But but once it started to really develop, I feel like early two thousands, you really started to see some guys grappling and, yeah. and taking that kind of stuff serious. And I mean, at the same time, you were seeing fighting develop yeah. in, in MMA. I feel like was starting to really pop off. Yeah. And it was just in general. I feel like man. Look how look how far his fighting's come. It's a crossover. It, yeah. You know, the whole combat sport genre is just, you know, it's insane, obviously. Yeah. And I've always said, you, and I stand on it, I always say all the time in all the fight reviews I do, I'm like, yo, Daniel Amesbury is one of the smartest fighters. Because, again, people don't understand, what do you mean a smart fighter? People don't understand you got to have a fight IQ. And I tell people all the time, if you watch Daniel Amesbury, he's not in there just throwing punches. You... I know you enough to know, and there's a, and there's a couple other guys that come to mind, but you specifically, like you have a target, and you and you're not just closing your eyes and throwing. Like I've seen the guys just close their eyes and throw and hope to land. Like you, your your shot percentage is pretty. Uh, your connect rate is pretty serious, man. Yeah, I find like my like I don't use it as much, but like obviously you know my central league days during the lockout. It would have been the lockout after 2005. Mm -hmm. The next lockout I think was 2012, 2013 yes. maybe. 
And that was when I got called up in the central. So I was fighting again, fighting, you know, Aaron Bugard, Kip Brennan, all these guys. Kip Brennan fought Chara, I think, the season before. Like, you know, these good, legit yeah. tough guys. But I started to learn, like, the grappling and the technical side. And I started training. I was lucky enough to train with Scott Parker. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Parker's Platoon Big and Scotty. Taboo Social Club. Yes, um, sir. Scott, you're a beast. And, uh, he taught me a lot of a really good grappling stuff. And then I trained with a guy named Rory Smith. Rory Smith was like the toughest guy in box lacrosse for a lot of years. Wasn't a big guy, maybe 180 pounds, but he just worked guys. You know, he had some boxing skills, but he was really technical. And he taught me a lot of stuff through email. He would email yeah. me fighters to study. He would, he would email me different ways, different techniques. And then he would have me practice them for a couple of weeks. And then I would go fight somebody mm. and I would try it. And I literally was able to pick up like, I would say five or, you know, a handful of different styles, Yeah, you know, different fighters have different styles. Well, I was able to study and practice maybe five or six different types, different styles. Yeah. And then now, you know, over the years, you know, that was 10 years ago. Yeah. And I, you know, I've obviously sharpened the pencil all the way through up until now where I have basically a style matchup for everything. So when I'm fighting a tall, tall guy, I know exactly what I'm doing. If I'm fighting a guy that likes to swing and, and, and slug, I know exactly what to do. Uh, cross grab, switching. Like I have all these things where it's like, I don't even have to think. As soon as somebody does something, mm -hmm. my body just reacts. So I'm able to think about other stuff while I'm fighting. And, and every boxer knows, every fighter knows that the key is having that stuff programmed so when you're actually in a fight, you don't have to think about it. Repetition. It's just happening. It's reactive. And then you're actually able to use like your conscious mind to make other decisions. And you're 100% right. I mean, in, in the almost 13 years I've been involved with boxing, I've, I've dealt with a lot of fighters on a management role, advisor role, promoter role, whatever you want to do. Try to do a jack of all trades type of thing. But you're so right because I've dealt with specific fighters in general um, one of them specific, specifically, I still work with Omar the Beast Bordeaux, Danbury, born and raised, twelve and one right he's now, one hundred and forty pounds. He's very smart. Yeah. He's small, and I think because he's always been small, he's you know you know like he's always been at a height disadvantage, hmm. even at his weight class. He is so smart, and um, it's just you just always when you see a fight, you know Fernelli Feliz Jr. You know what I mean? Like these are guys. These are Danbury guys. Just the IQ is insane, and people don't yeah. understand like the, the the psyche that goes into it. But um, aside from your smart IQ, you're also a wild man, which we know. <laughs> which I think brings us to we have to look at one of your latest videos. And, and as if people know, or don't know, talking trash podcast, we're always going to be miking Mr. Amesbury up on specific um, occasions, different fighters, different different sports. We're going to be doing a lot of mic'd up stuff going forward, and. Uh, Daniel never seems to um, disappoint whenever he's mic'd up. And uh, for all the technical prowess you have, you're also a wild man. So let's take a <laughs> look. I want to watch this because you showed you were showing me before, but I had you stop because I want to really watch when the camera's rolling. So why don't you set this up for yeah, us? Yeah, before I even put, uh, before we watch it, like this is just, I mean, if you're listening to this and you play in my league, just let me sleep. You know, don't yeah. go after my goalie, don't run around, just. Yeah, go make a clean hit. That's fine. Don't run around. Don't take a run at my best player. Don't touch my goalie. And I'll sleep. I'll play some defense. I'll play stay at home. You don't got to worry about me. But when you bite me, I'm going to bite back. Well, we, so, talk, we talked about this recently, and, and it's it's no bullshit here. Like, I'd say 90% of the fights you've been in this season alone, you've been challenged. I've been the one getting, yeah, jumped or challenged. And, and, yeah. and it's, it's crazy because, you know, it just goes to show you when you have a rep, good, bad, or indifferent, or you have some sort of image. I mean, right now, you I've always said it, you're the baddest man in hockey, and I mean that in a good way um, on a lot of different reasons. But when you have that rep of being an animal, people are just thinking you're the one going out hunting, when in yeah. reality, if you're really breaking this shit down, you're the one getting jumped. You're the one taking, you know, I liberties now, against. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that, 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 um, definitely. So this is, this is, this is... All right, here we oh, go. Oh, man. <laughs> That's great. That's good stuff. There you right go. There he goes. Good content. Yeah, you're angry. I, I know when you're legitimately mad. The mind games. Oh, a little toe drag there. There almost. it is. Yeah. 
Oh, you were looking Shout for that one. Shout out to one. the Brecky Club. There's the goalie. Yeet. Oh, he pushed me, man. <laughs> he screamed that. Go back. Can you go back to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Halloween's already passed, but you you look like trying to you look like you were scaring a group of ten uh, year olds with a Halloween mask here. Ah, yeah. there's the hit. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh so, my god. I mean, like I was playing, I, I I was playing pretty chill the whole game, and then these guys start running around, and then you know I get to the point where I'm like, hey man. You're going to run around, then I'm going to run around. Like, I don't, I'd rather play hockey. I'm telling you right now, I'd rather play hockey. This isn't really like, honestly, most of the time, maybe I shouldn't give all my secrets away, but most of the time when I'm barking at guys and stuff like that, like, I'm just getting in their head, you know? I'm sure it works. I'm sure it works. It has to work. So I was at this game. I was at this game. This was Watertown, correct? Yes. Watertown at home, Danbury Arena. And, and again, you know, I, whenever you're on the ice, I'm watching you just because you're my guy and whatever. And you were. It was a clean game, and everything was uh, fine. And then I feel like, did they run? They, go- they, came, they hit Frankie. Yeah, they, or yeah, I think they hit Frankie at first. That was, like, the first thing. We actually answered yeah. to it. Like, there was a fight and stuff. But it just after that, it just started getting dirty. And, like, one of their guys— It start, was getting chippy. Just, yeah, one of their guys starts—he just dives all the time, and it gets so frustrating and, like— Honestly, I and you just, were winning the game. I remember yeah. you were winning the game, yeah. and um, you know, it and was, then was, I, and then, I, and then the hit. I went which, and hit the guy. Yeah, and they, it, they, the I thought the hit was good. Like it was a clean, clean contact. Like that's the thing. What I, people can say whatever they want about me. I I don't elbow guys in the head. I don't knee on knee guys. I fucking. I'll hit you hard with my shoulder into your chest, and and you know what I mean. Well, I think I, like, I think you know, and again, I was at this game. I actually reviewed this fight on uh, our Trashers Instagram account, and I remember I, I do a lot of these fight reviews. I remember I reviewed the hit and the fight aftermath because the fight itself. And, and go to at DB Trashers on Instagram or um, at Aims to Barry. I mean, really, the reality is. The psyche of you beating that kid's ass, I mean, um, there really was a strategy to your actual strikes. But what I'm trying to tell people is you look at the hit. It was all shoulder. There was nothing yeah. dirty about it. In this day and age, was it a tad late? Maybe a second that, late. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? You just hit it on the head in, in the passes. I think your issue is you're in between generations of hockey. You see, yeah. you started in one generation yeah. and now you're playing in a whole nother generation. Yeah. So like that hit when you started wouldn't totally have been good. that yeah. wouldn't have like like that wouldn't even have, have been two minutes. No. Yeah. And and that's what I said. And that's the thing. And I that's said. what that's what I think is tough. And, and um, I just think you're caught in the crossfire of two different Games and generations, really. Yeah, well, we were taught, like, when we were really young, I remember them telling us three seconds, which if you think about now is an insanely long period of time. That's probably way too much. But even still, like, the other thing to think about, and I and I say this sometimes, like, I came from, you know, I was playing in the Central League, which was a really tough league, mm-hmm. it was like the UHL, and um, it was like the grittier version of the coast, yeah. same level at the, at the time, yeah. And, uh, you know, I played for Tulsa Oilers, who are in the coast now, and then I played for Denver Cutthroats, which are folded now. But, um, yeah, I, that was when I retired. I was in Denver in the Central League, and then I retired, and then I went home, and I wasn't playing hockey. And then last year I came out of retirement, and so it was weird. It was like it was like I was— I was You were fr- frozen in time. I was, it was, yeah, I was, just, I was you, actually just thinking about Austin Powers when uh, Dr. Yeah. Evil comes out. And he's like, <laughs> I was frozen for 30 freaking years here, Scott. Throw me, <laughs> throw me a freaking no, bone. It, it's so true, man. It's like, it's like you, you come back after a pretty lengthy, you know— um, 10 years or 11, uh, 9 I mean, years, that's a, that's a lengthy time to be away from any sport. And the fact that you could come back and dominate still physically is, is crazy. But you're right. It's a totally different thing. And I just think— um, it it's takes some getting be used tough. to. It, you know, one of the things, honestly, that the hardest thing for me to get used to is seeing guys consistently diving yeah. and guys that that don't battle through shit. So, like, if some, like to me, if I don't give a, if somebody high sticks me, mm-hmm. like, unless I lose my eye or unless it like genuinely hurts me, I'm not going to the ice because I'm playing hockey. Yeah. Like, if I get high sticked, I'm still going for the puck. Like, I'm still in a race. It's like if you watch like. It's like this isn't soccer, and it and it's so frustrating for me when you just touch a guy and he flops, yeah. and 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 it and then they end up calling a penalty because let's get real here. We play in the federal league. It's single A hockey. We got single A refs, 
And that's just what it is. I'm nothing against it. I mm. get it. I get what it is. But it's really hard for them to identify whether something's a flop or if it's a real thing, especially when they're, you know, they're probably already overwhelmed with, yeah. you know, shit that's going on. But you see guys consistently diving. And at this level, it's just so hard. Another thing is I think it's hard for, uh, in general, like if you're trying to ref a NHL style game like that tight, you have to be a very skilled ref to do yeah. that. To ref at that caliber and the ref that tight of a game, meaning the littlest stick hook or like the littlest, you know, the littlest grabs a hold, like all that stuff, you have to be a really good ref. So yeah. at the lower levels, it's very difficult to ref, like, but that's what's expected. It's expected to keep the game to that clean. Whereas to me, I think a better ref to game is a game where it's like, let's call the obvious penalties. Mm -hmm. Let's call the penalties if somebody's going to get hurt or, or if it's something where it's going to, you know, uh, keep somebody from a scoring chance or something like that. Let's, let's stick to the obvious stuff, but let's let the guys play for the most part, as long as it's not like a blatant trip, a blatant hook, you know, I think, I think at our level, that's kind of what it needs to be just because it is really difficult to ref a tight game, you know? Well, you you know, you said something I never really even thought about it. And it's such a smart thing is, you know, the level of play is also the level of referee, right? So these are yeah. a lot of refs on the come up as well. Yeah, so exactly. they don't really, you know, you have a lot of experience, but a lot of guys in that league playing don't have the most professional experience. And it's the same goes for the refs. And you're yeah. right. I feel like there has to be, and listen, I get it. We say this all the time, new era, it's 2023, yada, yada, yada. But it's still hockey. You can't yeah. be diving. You sent me some clip recently of a kid that looked like he got hit with a shotgun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll and have and to it's see a, a review on that. Yeah, we'll have to, I might have to hit that on Instagram this, you know. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, um, I mean, listen, I get it. There's gamesmanship, but it's still... It's hockey, man. You, yeah, you, know, you can't be you can't be flopping around like a fish out and there. And it's not. It's, it's, nuts. it's it's the thing is, it's not. It's just refing in general. It's not like our league. It's not anything like that. Like nothing against any specific refs. It's just in general, it's very difficult to be a ref. Like yeah. my cousin's a very high caliber ref. He's been a ref for a long time, and he's amazing at his job. Mm -hmm. Probably should be in the NHL, but um, it's a hard job. Like I couldn't do it. I know no. I couldn't do it, especially in Danbury when you got fans yelling at you. Yeah, like screaming profanities <laughs> at you the whole entire game, yeah. you know, and, and it, there's already the pressure. And then obviously we play a gritty game, so it's even more pressure. Like it's got to be pretty overwhelming. Yeah. But I mean, for me, it's like I think it's very difficult to ref an NHL style game mm -hmm. when you're kind of just on the come up sure. in the early levels of your development or, or working your way up whatever you know it's it's one of the things we've talked about as as we continue to evolve with this podcast and everything we're doing is i want everybody's point of view and to me i think we got to get some refs here yeah definitely. whether they're retired or not involved with the federal league obviously we don't please we don't want any tampering charges here yeah. so you know what i mean <laughs> like probably suspend me just for yeah this exactly yeah. so you know i love to get because you know you never like I think the thing that makes me mad with officiating and, and what drives me crazy is baseball, right? These umpires. Yeah. Listen, that's a tough sport to officiate. Oh, yeah. Umpiring Especially balls now because you can strikes. see everything on TV. Oh, it's exactly got to be a brutal job. Yeah. I think the thing, I think the disconnect for me, why, why I think people hate refs, officials, umps, whatever you want to call them, they're never, you never hear from them. Yeah. Like they 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 whisk away and they're sure. hidden. Like yeah. listen, I've seen so many bad calls made that that's changed championships before. And you know what? If that was a player, like if you're out there, right? If you're playing defense and you're on the blue line and you botch a shot and and they take it and score, you know, on a breakaway and you just lost the the cup for them, you're gonna have to sit on the podium and explain what happened. What yeah. was going through your head, Ames? You know what I mean? These refs and umps. Again, I don't envy their job, but yeah. they don't have to answer for shit. Yeah, exactly. They yeah. make a bad call, and it's like, whatever, well, what can you do? You yeah. bark at them, they throw you out, they this. So I think that's where the disconnect is. Um, I they can't explain it. And you know what? The thing is that I'm, like, I mean, I'm not a kid anymore, so I'm starting to understand these things. Everybody has good days and bad days. Mm -hmm. I'm, one of my biggest difficult, like, my struggles that I have within my game is my sometimes inconsistency. And like, I can have a really good game one day. And sometimes have a really bad game, but I get that people are mm -hmm. going to have those inconsistencies. But I, I'm not going to lie, the refs that we have in our league, I have way better. It's way better off to the start this year and near yeah. the end of last year because I think they understand me now and they understand I'm a 
regular human. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to do a certain job and I'm not like, you know, when there's a scrum, I'm respectful to them, yeah. you know, and I feel like you, I have a fairly, fairly decent relationship Listen, in the way we, you know, relationship, whatever it is. Like we're, we're really early on to this season for, for you guys, the hat tricks, uh, 23, 24 season. And honestly, I could tell you real, you've shown a lot more control and restraint i feel like this season already as opposed to last year yeah and um that's not a bad thing that's a great thing um but yeah you just hit it on the head there is a relationship between refs and players like people think like the refs are just their own you know there's relationships there and, and they gotta they gotta know what they're dealing with and uh vice versa i mean you know going out all this ref you know like we used to, even in high school i knew if there were certain refs out there it was gonna be a long game you know what i mean so yeah it's uh it's one of those things, but yeah, that video that video is great. You know, Mike and up Daniel Amesbury. We're gonna have a lot more stuff like that. Lots and of mic'd up content coming up. Yes, so. a lot yeah. of different. We stuff We gotta get some up. refs on here though. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I want to know. Like, yeah. like I, I sometimes I'll watch something. I'm like, what's the reasoning? You know what I mean? And uh, we'll we'll definitely work on that. Yeah. But listen, we got your tablet out. We might as well go to rough and rowdy we we spoke about it recently how how that whole situation you know getting hooked up with barstool um you know g getting you involved with rough and rowdy and and uh it, it's funny because i always tell this story your first rough and rowdy fight was last december in providence rhode island and i remember the matchmaker jerry thomas shout out to jerry rough and rowdy i remember he reached out to me and said hey we got this um we got this kid for uh, diamond hands uh, he's pretty seasoned. He's fought for us a few times. You know, is this going to be too much for Diamond Hands? I just remember, I remember he sent me the kid. And God bless. Anyone who walks into a ring is, I don't care. They get my respect no matter what. Yeah, of course. And, and Great I just, guys too. Yeah. And, and was it Zach Abel, Zach right? Zach Abel, yeah. Got a lot of respect for this kid and his brother. They, they, they go for it, man. Win, lose, or draw, they go for it. And I just remember being like, yeah, Jerry, you sure you want to do this? Because I know what you can do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, listen, end of the day, as I've gotten older, I've kind of, my stance with certain things have softened sometimes. I don't, you never want to see someone get seriously hurt, right? So I'm like, yeah, man, I mean, if that's what you want to do, that's what that's what you want to do. Do you remember the, the day that I came into the gym? Like, what, but like you had found out who I was fighting, and, I, and you're like, hey, come by the gym. I want to show you something. I don't know if you remember this. And I come into the gym, and you're pacing the gym by yourself, and you kind of got this, like, shit grin on, and you're, like, not even really making eye contact with me. You're kind of throwing a couple punches on some bags as you're walking by and stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? He's like, you're like, oh. He's like, I don't know. He's like, I think we might get arrested for this one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about? And he, and then you showed me who I was fighting, and I was like, well, fuck, dude. Like, that's who they want me. All right, let's do it. Let's I, and here's and the thing, bro. Again, and I'm not trying to say this like this makes me some superior person because I'm the farthest from it, but I've been around the fight game now for a little while, okay? And I'm just like, I don't know if this is a matchup. For this kid, I mean, you know you what said I mean. He, he knew. I mean, but whatever. you know what? I, I got, got footage online. He didn't yeah. have much footage online. You know what I mean? Whatever. So, so God bless. But I, I want to, you know, to, you know. Listen, it's December third. We're almost, uh, we're almost at the year anniversary of this fight. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. I, I think we gotta, we Able, gotta watch Shout out this. to the Able brothers, though. Love those guys. Yeah. Real, real. You know, those are blue collar tough guys, man. Oh, yeah. and those Where are, are they guys, from Ohio or P uh, oh, Pittsburgh? They're from, from out Pittsburgh, there, right? Pittsburgh, right? They got that crazy accents. I, I like those guys, the Able yeah. Brothers. I, 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 um, I genuinely like those guys. But uh, right. yeah, so let's there check this go. out. It's not that long, so let's see. What are you thinking walking into the ring here? I gotta ice this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was crazy. It was like in front of nine thousand people. It was packed in there. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe how many people were were. He clipped me. He right catches here. you there, he right? Me right there. Yeah, I was like, oh shit. It wakes you up. Oh, the body shot. <laughs> he almost landed on a port noise a lot. Wit. You can hear Wit. Wit was a big, big Diamond Hands fan, it looks yeah. like. Yeah. Little flex for oh, the crowd. Oh my God. And I remember it, that like yesterday, man. And that was it, dude. Go back to the start of the fight. What about the interview too? Like we gotta <laughs> go over the interview after. Too. Like, like the the interesting thing about this fight, and I and I've noticed about you, you have to get hit once to really to get going. I know. Get going. It's something that I need to be better at. Like, I, but that I just think ideal. that's some guy. That's like yeah. I know it's a such lot a of, hockey fighter thing. Yes, but he does catch you, 
And I remember watching and I'm like, oh, he messed up now because now he's up. Now I know if you weren't up, you're up now. But watch the body shot right there. Yeah, now he worked, has to bring his head, hands down, and there he goes. Yeah, we worked on that body shot. Me and Dave worked on that body shot for Shout out weeks. Coach Dave McDonough, champs, yeah. finest. Body head, body head. And that's I tell people this all the time, Ames, and you know, like, the body is not the sexiest punch to throw. No. But it, it it opens up the head, though. Every, and that yeah. was a perfect example right there. Yeah, yeah that's... Uh, Dude, that's that's just how we do it. Champs, look at look yeah. at big cuts. Look at Simon Levy big back cuts. there. Look at Shout big out. cuts. Yo, we gotta we gotta fast forward almost to the interview. I just remember able. Well, you do that. I just remember like um, I just remember being so proud watching you in there, man. I'm just like, yo, this was some knockout, man. Dude, it, it was, was fun, highlight man. reel. So I want to get to this. Uh, here we go. This is this is gold right here. <laughs> Do you do you agree? Do you agree with the decision? I mean, I thought it was an early stop and we just started. I popped right. I mean, it popped right up. I, I thought it was an right early stop, I, like, I popped right up. He's a nice kid. Him and his whole team are great. Like, uh, nothing bad to say. I wish we could have went a little longer. Though. I wish we, we could have went a little longer. We just fucking getting, you guys were just I've getting started. I literally popped up. But, like, I don't get why the fuck you're off. I literally whatever, popped dude. up. I, mean, we'll I love this kid. Yeah. And rowdy. Dan's a good addition. I love that fucking kid, so. Whatever, He's a good dude, dude man. They were, they were they were such good people, man. Yeah, his whole family, his, his dad, and him. And his listen, that's the thing. When we review some of these fight videos, obviously sometimes more or less there's gonna be a loser. This this isn't this isn't the knock Zach Abel. I no, genuinely man. Zach a gem. I genuinely I fuck with that guy. And yeah. you know, I'll tell you what, if we go back, we'll have Shane tee it up after. If you watch that knockout. He's lucky that those ropes weren't as tight as they oh, probably yeah. should be because yeah, you yeah. see his head, and thankfully there was a little slack on that rope. And that's yeah. what people don't get to is ice, the ring, the cage, whatever, wherever you're fighting. Sometimes it's not even the punch that'll knock you out. It's your landing. Yeah. And if you look at that, we'll have Shane teed up. I'm telling you, he hits his head on the ropes, and thankfully there was a lot of loose slack. It wasn't slack, a hard, hard Because if yeah. it was hard— that could have been even could even have uh, out more, yeah. that could have been more more disastrous, man. And, yeah. And, and listen, you touched on it. I mean, you know, we take that fight. You take that fight last December. You're in the middle of your hockey season. You've been, you know, people don't know. Like you don't. It's not like you play hockey. You practice and you go home. I mean, you're one. You're a dog. You so you're a workhorse. You're always at our gym, Champs Boxing Club. Yeah. And I mean, you're you're like. Uh, you're you're a staple there at this point, and I feel like you and and you know Dave McDonough, Coach Dave, have hit it off, and yeah. I just feel like you guys got this chemistry, and and you said you guys worked on exactly, the, and I mean, I know Dave, that's my right hand guy. I mean, I know he took a lot of pride in that fight too, yeah. because when fighters listen more times than not, you're gonna get the results, you know. Yeah, well, it was it was funny too, because remember we drove back. That was on Friday night, right? Yeah. In Providence, which is like, what, two and a half, three hours yeah. away or whatever. I missed my Friday night game. We had a home game. Yes. I fought on Friday night. Mm -hmm. We hung out. We drove back, I think, the next morning. Yeah, Saturday. I, I want to say Simon drove back with us, too. And and he was <sighs> hounding me the whole drive because France well, just beat well, Portugal. Well, we got to get that because you just j reminded me of that. We'll get to Simon Levy after about that. Fr yeah, he's hounding me about Portugal had just got knocked out of World Cup and France was going to the finals and he wouldn't shut up. I was like, dude, give me a break, dude. Like, Quick backstory for those who don't know Simon Levy. He's our cut man at the Champs Boxing Club, former amateur boxer. He's a one-of-a-kind guy. We're going to be talking about him a lot. We're going to have to get him here because he's a character. But if you've watched the movie A Bronx Tale, there's a character called Mush. And Mush is uh, notorious for always losing. He's a notorious loser, betting, this and that. Simon Levy is our Mush. Nice. Yeah, that's true. He's not a loser in life. He's just a loser in general when it comes to, like, he's when never— When we play games. Never or, beat, uh, he's never won a video game in It actually years. just so happens, too, that his team did lose yes, to Argentina. He's a loser. Argentina a won. Anything, so, so France lost, too. So Simon is a notorious loser, and, like, it's to the point now where it's like, I'm not a gambler. <laughs> But if I had a gamble, if I my life depended go on him. Go against him. Hey, Simon, who's winning this game? And, then go and he's going to say in his accent, bro, I take Bruins in this game. Bro, take the opposite. Montreal. <laughs> Simon <laughs> Levy, and maybe that's a segment. Maybe we have him put up bets and just and everyone. Go the other way. I mean, maybe DraftKings will, will uh, sponsor us because like Simon Levy is the biggest jinx. 
He has never won anything. He's one of my best friends, by the way. I, I, through all this, yeah, he's yeah, one. Yeah. He's like a brother yeah. to me. But yeah. he's a loser when it comes to video games. He could probably betting. get like a Duncan sponsor. And the like funny that. thing, oh please, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. He talks so much. You talk about talking trash. Oh, yeah. Nobody in my life. Yeah. Okay. Nobody in my life I've ever met has talked more trash than him. He's always talking. And the trash. thing about him that I respect is he stands on it, and he he could be dead wrong. And he loses, and he'll still talk trash. And 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 that goes back. I remember that ride home because he's, um, you know, his his family's from France, and uh, that was the World Cup going on. And he swore up and down France was going to win the World Cup, and he yeah. was really remember chirping you. We were going to send him a messy jersey. We never got around to it. Yeah, I want to get him those little soccer shorts. Yeah. you know, and we're going to put a picture of Simon so, up on the screen so you could see how that would look. So we end up getting back to Danbury. Is what happened. So I fought Friday night rough and rowdy, got my knockout, came back to Danbury. I had, think I had two fights. Yeah, that night. you did. And actually, I should bring one of my teammates on to tell this story. But we had, we had oh, eight fights that game or something. Seven Who'd fights. Who'd you that play? Game. I think we played bingo. If I remember correctly, it was the game like I fought at Puck Drop okay. against Schultz, and then I hit Yates later that game. Okay. And then I fought. But I, I'm pretty sure that's the game it was. Is Binghamton the rival? Like I oh, know yeah. for I know yeah. for Danbury we, when the trash is I know it was Adirondack no, Frostbite. Yeah, bingo because we, Bingo's uh, your guy. Right? Yeah, because we knocked out Bingo two years in a row in the semifinals. Gotcha. So last year we knocked him out in the semifinals and then went and won. And the year before, same thing. But that's they, right. But they didn't win. They, we had so Bingo. Chicken, yeah, because I I've always Bingo's yeah. definitely Bingo's the rival. Yeah, they're yeah. It does feel one. it does seem different when they come to yeah. town or vice versa. When you guys go there, it seems to be oh, yeah. a buzz. But um. Yeah, I scored in bingo last year, and it was it was hilarious. Man. Oh, man. Off the back glass, too. Such a goon goal. Like, Dude, your goals are the good. Yeah. You know why I love the times you score is because they couldn't be more on brand. Oh, yeah, totally. Your goals, and we're going to keep it. We're going to, you know, we're going to have Shane. You I could have had, you know, I tried to get that one right out of the air, and the goalie got a crazy save on it, so then I just had to goon it through, and, it, you know. Whatever it takes, out. bro. But I, I'm, 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 <laughs> I mean, how many hockey players could say they, they, <laughs> They fight boxing, and then the next day they're fighting two, three times on night. It's, it's I crazy. think I had five fights in ten days or something like that. Most versatile fighter something in like the world. That. I'll yeah. stand on that as well. Get but after uh, it. I honestly think at one point I had to have had like, I don't know how many fights I had last year, but I had to be competing for like the most real fights. Have to. Because who the fuck else is fighting that much? Nobody. Honestly, like I'm talking real fights. Like guys yeah. spar and shit, but I'm talking like, Real, yeah, real fights. Like, how many guys are actually going up against someone like I'm going to knock your teeth down? Your yeah, throat? it's it's like, uh, d like every weekend. And you're a very pleasant person on the outside too. To you're I mean, you're you're a peach, bro. I, I mean, you're a hell of a guy like, too. I, feel, I mean, you're not I feel angry. The same way. You're not that angry. I don't I, have to be angry. I, get I know, to fight but that's what I'm weekend, saying. But the, you know? the normal people, when they hear yeah. that, they're thinking, "Man, this guy's a menace to society." Just you're, a loony tune. You're the most pleasant, one of the most pleasant, nice. But those are guys you got to worry about. So man. one of the things that I explain to people when they meet me, it, and and I and I actually learned this from Parks because Parks is a lot like me, and Francesca, his amazing wife, told me this and made sense of it to me, is we don't have dimmers. I'm a guy, mm -hmm. I don't have a dimmer. There's no Amesbury dimmer switch. Yeah. It's on or off. Or it's off. Yep. So just sometimes just let it be off, you know? Yeah. And, and we're good. But when it goes on, it's yeah. fucking on until it comes off. Yeah. You know? And there's no like, I don't have like a, I don't have like a middle. I can't yeah. go four or 5,000 RPM. Dude, I can I get go 10,000 RPM. Or 1,000 RPM. There's no, yep. like, dimmer switch to get me somewhere. It'd and be great if I had one, but I just can't seem to find it. This is my exact personality. That's why I don't have too many hobbies, because if I get into something, <laughs> it's all in. Fantasy. Yeah, thank you for yeah. that fuck. Like, people are like, oh, I don't know if you ever, you know, everyone says, you need a hobby. You need to stop working so much. The thing is, if I stop, like, I can't do one. It's like one or the other. Yeah. Like, 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 I'm all in. You see me. I work all day, all day, seven days a week. If I had a hobby, I'd have to stop working almost. And just the hobby is now my job. Like I could never I could never play golf, bro, cuz I'd have to buy a $1000 thing of clubs. Golf's I need legit. this, I need that. I'd be it I can't so I got a What real, about this? I got I got something. What if you turned your hobby into your job? Well, listen, 
it always says it always seems like it's gonna be like that. But I take it. <laughs> I think one of my biggest weakness is also one of my biggest strength and vice versa. I take everything serious, and that's a good thing at times and a bad. Thing. Like everything is like you just said, man. Pedal to the metal. It's either full that time. or it's not, man. So we're gonna start a Twitch streaming account. And we're gonna just play video <laughs> games full time, and that's gonna be our job. There we go. I think I still solved the situation right there. Listen, it's funny you bring up video games because last week we were talking a little bit about wrestling and we were talking about, you know, that WCW NWO revenge game, which Is that N64? That was N64. N64 to me was pound for pound maybe the best system. It was a pinnacle. I feel like it was a staple in our generation. I mean, you're a little bit older than me, but I feel like that was when I feel like that was when games started getting like real. So it's weird because my first system, I, mean, I was born in 1986. When I was old enough to start playing games, I remember my first was the original NES, you know, su you know, regular yeah. Nintendo. Then it was Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. You know, we we had so many consoles. Super Nintendo is pretty legit. Dude. Super Nintendo, I man. is. is uh, I would say Super Nintendo. N64. N64 are very, And then very I feel staples. like, you're right. I feel like Super Nintendo, I feel, but you just hit on it, like N64... That's when we were right when you knew anything after N64 is going to be pretty legit. It started to be graphics. Yeah, like like that was, was when like, graphics that, started getting talked about. People that, were like, whoa, that looks real. N64 was like, oh, shit, we're turning a page here. And then after was PlayStation and the rest was history. But N64, I mean, arguably the, the greatest game ever, GoldenEye. GoldenEye. Like... Our, my street, I had like eight boys or like seven or eight boys on my street and we'd have sleepovers and we would just play four player bond and it would just go on for hours, hours. And we would literally, we had a rule and it was no odd job, which I think everybody should use this rule. <laughs> if you're playing, uh, That's an honorable if you're thing. playing gold nine, no odd job. It's just a standard honorable rule because odd jobs too short. Yeah. And it's kind of like cheating because you come around the corner and you shoot odd jobs is too small of a target. So you know, no odd job. You know, you, you know, Goldmine. you know, it's funny, you know, I'm at 37 now. I'm at that age where you start looking at what the young kids are doing. I'm turning into a bitter old man. Like, ah, oh, do you believe these kids are doing this these days? You know, all they're, all they're doing is playing uh, Call of Duty. We were doing the same thing. Yeah. So I, I'm like, I got to check myself sometimes. I'm sitting here making fun of these guys playing Fortnite, this, that. But yeah, we were doing the same thing. Except now these kids are making a hundred grand a month yeah. doing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> People are watching you play. Imagine. So you taught, so not to interrupt yeah. you, you know, you know, we, before on our way here, we're talking and, and, you know, we wing a lot of this stuff we talk about here, but we were talking a couple things. You said something about Twitch. Twitch, yeah. And I'm looking at you like, what the hell is Twitch? Yeah, you don't even I know. I had no idea what Twitch was. Yeah, so Twitch. And then what was the other one that uh, he just told us? I about? don't know. I can't remember what the All other I one was know called. is these kids today would rather watch someone play than actually play. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, well, especially young kids too. Especially, it's crazy. But yeah, Twitch is like a streaming thing. And it's, and it's people are just. They're getting huge money. We just looked up this guy. I think he got signed for what, what was a hundred million dollar Twitch contract. God bless, man. Or maybe it wasn't Twitch. It was the new one. I don't. I don't know what the other one. Listen, called, in my day we played for honor. We yeah. played for honor. soda. Yes, I bet you. So you know how in depth. You know, it's funny you say four person uh, Goldeneye Bond. You know how serious it was. You remember like. Used to be able to cheat a little bit. You could see where so and so. Yeah, was oh yeah. You watch their screens. We used to have like a a, flat a divider part of a box. Yeah, yeah. And, dude, it oh, was yeah. it was. Uh, we man. should get some four player bond, uh, bond going, and then honestly, we could we could maybe stream it on Twitch or something or a streaming listen, network. If a streaming, I'm I'm if a someone very, wants to sign us to a streaming. Well, listen, site, shout out to my boy Manny Gonzalez and his, and his son Mikey uh, out in Brooklyn. Those that's like another brother to me. I, two, they're two big two. into two video two. games. Two v two. We may have to start two v two in it a little bit. NHL two v two. Dude, stay and, home, demon. And and, and, and <laughs> exactly. Listen, shout out also ODR hockey heroes. We yes. talked about this. Yes, <clears throat> my boy Chris started his own video game. That is unreal. Which is like, it's, it's, and he's around our age, and it's like, you know, you, you think about our age, like growing up, like, I want to create a video game. This guy did. It's like a dream come true. I mean, could you imagine start? And he did. He was a, he was a producer for, you know, he's done a lot of stuff tech wise. And, and I guess a few years ago, he started doing this, and it's very arcade style. I showed you the clips of it. It kind of reminded me when I watched the clips of like Blades of Steel. Yeah. But like a little more arcade-y may maybe, but super cool. But I see that, cool. see, I like arcades. You yeah, know, me I too. I feel like things are so real now. Like, and I don't get me wrong, I love it. I love sport games especially, but 
it's to the point now where like one joystick your left skate, one joystick. It's, yeah, it's too crazy. complicated. Yeah. So my guy Chris created ODR Hockey Heroes, and the cool thing is they're making the Trashers a playable team. Nice. They're putting me in the game. They're putting you in the game. Sick. And dude, I could just imagine the two v two we could have with that oh, because yeah. that that that's like that's like anything goes. You know what I mean, I, yeah. I like a game every once in a while. You don't have to think too much about it, and the game and the game's legit. That's unreal. We'll have to drop a drop a link for that, dude. Hundred percent, man. What other games you like growing up? Would you would you would you play, man? Other than like Goldeneye, like me, I was always a sports guy. Madden before there was football games before. What Madden. was the was it NFL Blitz? NFL, Do you remember oh, NFL Blitz? Yeah. NFL Arcade. Blitz was sick. Yeah. NBA Jam. NBA <laughs> Jam is probably one of that was Super Nintendo, right? So it started arcade. Okay. Like th- yeah. back in the yeah, day yeah, when yeah. it started as an arcade game. Yeah. And then when we would find out it's coming to like a console, it was like the biggest thing yeah. in the world. I remember me and my cousin Tony would go to the Danbury Mall. Uh, it's not there anymore. God bless. The old, it used to be called Time Out. It was a big arcade in the mall. And we would there would be a line out the door to play NBA Jam. Really? Cool. Jordan, Pippen, um, you know, it's just uh, boom shakalaka. I mean, th- th- and it started at, they all were arcade games and went to console. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. I, what about Mortal Kombat? Did you play Mortal Kombat? Yeah. Mortal I, Kombat was It started one. getting a little too crazy for me as it went the on. The combos and stuff. The, you always had to watch out for that one kid that just memorized the combos. Or he bought like, the cheat book. Yeah. Or he the and it was like book. he would know them all. And then like, you know, I had one buddy, he, Al, he would, I couldn't, you couldn't even come near him in this game. Yeah. He knew that every, every combo, but for every guy. Like he knew oh, every Oh, what a special, dick. Yeah. Nah, dude, Street Fighter, I would always play with Blanca. You play Street Fighter? Street Fighter, yeah. So Blanca too. was that green thing. It was like yeah. a creature and, and he his special move was he would like radiate you know what i mean like shit yeah. would, like he would like and i would just do that move the whole time you yeah. couldn't do it was it was man the gold arcades man those were those were some fun time yeah. remember the terminator shooting game i feel like the studio needs an arcade game bro i would love uh, we got to talk to ian about that i would love to get um you know you ever play pinball yeah. I'm an old school oh, guy. Pinball, pinball machine would be fire. Pinball machine, you need a little skill for a pinball. Pinball machine would be okay. legit. And that's old school. That's like a real game, you know? Like that's legit. Oh uh, man. Yeah, they're not they, cheap, a pinball no. machine. They're not cheap. Even the you know, they're reproducing stuff now, but like even the classic ones are like ridiculous. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Super cool though. We definitely gotta get some gaming going. I feel like the new NHL is pretty crazy too, eh? I haven't Have gotten it yet, it? but I heard it's great. You just gotta hip check everybody. That's how you They hit. added that. That's a you just big thing is the hip check. Yeah, they like got, don't even hit anybody any other way. You just hip check I people. I feel good just, about my team. The New Jersey Devils, that's been my team forever. They got a solid team in real life, which it's going to translate to video games. I, I like it. How's man. your uh, fantasy team doing? I'm 2-1. 2-1. And, and, Better than uh, me. I'm 2-1. and one. Huh. Um you know, for so so Amesy got me into. Fa- I've never played fantasy. Amesy, I got you into fantasy. It's my first fantasy too. <laughs> yeah, but you got me into it did, nonetheless. Yeah. I've never played fantasy sports ever. Fantasy football again, yeah. my obsessive compulsive. So I remember it was a Wednesday night. I was at my sister's birthday dinner, and you're like, "Hey, we need one more guy for fantasy." We and were on the bus. We were on the road I was trip. Like, I was like, "Ah, screw it, I'll do it." You know what yeah. I mean? I'm like, you know, it was like a last minute draft. And I'm too. like, "When's like, the when's the draft start?" Uh, five minutes. I was like, "Shit." <laughs> And you know what? I wish that we would have waited because I would have yeah. done more homework because I was getting misled by all the guys on my team and they kind of sewered me a couple times. But So, yeah, we got a, we got a nice, uh, basically it's... it's. I'm 0-3, man. It's going to be You're gonna 0-3? Be tough, I'm 0-3, man. I'm dead last. I'm 2-1. Uh, I'm currently, gonna be, you know, as of filming right now, I, I'm, I'm playing... Uh, my strategy, though, like probably not like... I mean, I thought it was a good strategy, but like I was looking like... I was obviously picking like top guys, but I was looking for top guys that like are still getting block shots and like kind of you know block shots and hits. Like I got, I guarantee at the end of the season I got the most block shots, bro. I put the team together like a legit team. Like oh, I need a grinder. Yeah, yeah, that's probably smart. That's exactly what I was doing. Yeah, I just went all grinders. But uh, yeah. yeah, man, I'm learning. Kuzi seems like he's got the inside Kuzi's track. Got, Kuzi's, Kuzi's yeah. just got all the Euros and the Russians. Yeah, man, he's he went, putting. Out, I look every once in a while, like yeah. uh, like usually a good game for a guy is like two to three points. This guy's got guys seven points. I'm I like, where the hell do you get this guy? I feel like they're already started. I feel KP like I got two is three and zero. I believe Who? Uh, KP. Hey, really? Okay, I'm pretty sure he's three yeah. and zero. I'm pl- uh, you know and yeah. uh, Mc- McKittrick. Yeah, he's really pissing me off because he's got he's got a lot of lot of good players. Who's, he, who's his team? The Edmonton Eskimos. Eskimos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Tricky we, is an Eskimo. That's pretty cool. 
He's literally you told me from, about that. He's literally from like he like they he, get they get after it up there. He's man. a hardcore guy, man. You showed me some have pictures. Him on. Sh- Absolutely, the picture of him holding the uh, polar bear head is pretty crazy because that's like gnarly, kind of triggering for some people probably. Yeah, it's twenty twenty three. We're gonna have to figure that one out, but I'm all for it. Man. I'm I'm down, dude. They're surviving up there. Dude. Yeah, why don't you try and go up there and you yeah. know try and survive. So you know, yeah, our, like, fan, our fantasy league's fun, man. It's, it it's been good. it's it's been cool to like kind of you know get to know some of the other guys on the team. Yeah. You know the Danbury Hattricks. Yeah, obviously I know you and KP and most of that. Gonzo beat me the other week, where it's really pissed me off. But uh, man, it's been fun, bro. It's good, man. Like it's you know it's and honestly for me like the biggest thing is like I'm kind of like now I watch hockey more mm-hmm. and like my son loves hockey's obsessed. So that's why I wanted to do it myself is I wanted to watch yeah. more hockey so he sees me watching hockey and he watches hockey. This kid is so obsessed with hockey. Listen, Obse- he, obsessed, he wants like, to fight me every time I walk in the door. Yeah. He's dro- <laughs> he literally carries a stick, he drops it, and oh, he and he man. pounds me. Yeah, and he's getting he's, strong. Uh, he's nails. You got him some sweet boxing gloves, actually. Yeah, he's um he's a tough I, one, man. I don't he's, really put my kids on the internet. I don't really share like no, videos so, and stuff. It's yeah. all private for my no, no, family no. and stuff. But no. like maybe one day I'll, I'll uh when he's you know, maybe he's a, he's maybe a, one day. He is a beauty, man. Him and your daughter and uh Listen, man, we're a few weeks away from Christmas. We talked about, you know, around Thanksgiving time, gorging. Christmas, I might eat more than are Thanksgiving. We, are we doing Christmas movies? Yeah. I sure hope so. <laughs> I'm not teasing anything yet. I want to do got, Christmas movies. We got, we got some cool Christmas stuff coming up down the down the shoot here. And uh, listen, guys, make sure you like and subscribe. Hit us up. We're going to put a link in. Send us some emails. Send us some topics. Send us some fights to review. Anything you guys want to see, we're, we're a pod for the people, man. The fourth line boys over Let's here. Let's do it. You know, and uh, listen, like, subscribe, and uh, looking forward to the next one, bro. Chip and chase. Get those pucks deep. See you next time.